faster than the fabric of space-time can keep up with it, and it'll just rip. And I'm terrified by this. The universe is full of wonders, beautiful, mysterious, and sometimes terrifying. Among the most fascinating are the dead or dying remnants of stars that have reached their limits. Stars like pulses, neutron stars, and magnetars. These aren't just distant objects drifting silently through space. They are cosmic reminders of physics pushed to extremes. Take a star on the brink of collapse. A star that has burned through its fuel and can no longer resist the relentless pull of gravity. When that happens, the core implodes, crushing matter into unimaginably dense objects, neutron stars. Sometimes these neutron stars spin wildly fast, emitting beams of radiation that sweep across space like cosmic lighthouses. These are pulses. And if the magnetic fields are strong enough, trillions of times stronger than Earth's, we get magnetars, the most magnetic objects known in the universe. But what makes these stars so dangerous? It's not just the collapse. It's what happens afterward. Immense radiation bursts, powerful magnetic fields, and energy that can disrupt everything nearby. Yet even when these titans erupt or explode, their threat to us on Earth is often overstated, because the universe operates on scales of time and distance that boggle the mind. If a magnetar were to erupt in our galaxy, the radiation might take thousands, even tens of thousands, of years to reach us. And if it already has, we wouldn't know yet. Now, compare this with Betelgeuse, one of the brightest stars in our night sky, a red supergiant nearing the end of its life. Astronomers have watched Betelgeuse dimming and brightening, sparking rumors that it might explode any minute. But in cosmic terms, any minute can mean tens of thousands of years. When Betelgeuse eventually goes supernova, it will shine brighter than the moon for a time. But it's hundreds of light years away, so its light and any radiation will take that long to reach us. Pulsars and magnetars are even more extreme. They're remnants of stars that were once more massive than Betelgeuse. When they collapse, the result is an object only about 20 kilometers across, roughly the size of a city, but with a mass greater than our sun. Imagine compressing the entire sun into something the size of New York City. The gravity, pressure, and magnetic fields are so intense that matter behaves in ways we can barely understand. Betelgeuse, a sprawling red supergiant, could engulf the orbit of Mars if placed at the center of our solar system. A neutron star? Just a tiny dot in comparison, but packing unimaginable power. And magnetars? They generate magnetic fields so strong they could wipe data off a credit card from halfway to the moon. These stars teach us something profound. They show that the universe isn't about comfort or predictability. It's about extremes, pressure pushing matter beyond limits, gravity collapsing stars into tiny dense spheres, radiation bursting out in ways that challenge our understanding. They remind us that the cosmos runs on physics, raw, unyielding, and awe-inspiring. So the next time you look up at the stars, especially giants like Betelgeuse, remember you're looking into the past at objects shaped by forces so immense they redefine our idea of reality. Dangerous, yes, but also deeply beautiful because these stars don't just threaten they tell the story of the universe's incredible scale and power. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this journey through space and time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss the next one. There's a whole universe out there waiting to be explored.